You should be seeing the red screen now with the green hand. Uh-huh. Do you see it? Yeah. Okay, fine. Hey everybody, how's it going? Thanks for joining. We're just going to do a couple real quick tests to make sure the uh, microphone is working. If anybody's having trouble hearing me right now, uh, please let me know in the comments and we'll address that real quick. Just give me one second to kind of get things organized. Okay, great. Well, it uh, looks like everything is working okay. Uh, one second here. Let's just give, give it one minute to get it, let everybody join in. Alright, great. I want to just jump right into it because we don't have a ton of time today and I'd like to get as far uh, along with this zombie as possible, maybe even finish it if we can. Um, I want to thank everybody who submitted uh, suggestions for the zombie we're drawing today. There was like, I think there was over 300. It was crazy. Um, they were all great and one thing that's really exciting is so many of the suggestions are actually things we've already done. Uh, so it looks like we were on the right track. Uh, like uh, Wizard, for example, is one that I would love to draw today, but we've already done it. Um, so we picked a, uh, a knight. And this was submitted by, um, and I hope I pronounced the name right, it's uh, Denkal40, D-E-N-K-A-L-40. Um, we're going to draw a knight today. Um, a lot of the suggestions that people made uh, some of them were from like copyrighted characters and as as much fun as that would be i kind of had to stay away from those um but what we're doing today is we are drawing a zombie the last zombie in the nft set for zombie chains this is going to be launching next week and um here we go um I also had a bunch of questions submitted to me uh, by Twitter users. So as I'm drawing, I'll try to, I'll try to answer those questions and, and let you know a little more about myself and about the process here. So what we're doing is we're starting with the base skin here. Um, and I'm just going to jump right into the weapons. What I do first is do a very light sketch. And then I go over that again in ink and then do it in color. Okay, let's go. <clears throat> so I wanna do this like very kind of stylized sword. And forgive me, my, my loose sketches are really loose. So it's gonna take a moment for it to start looking like anything. Kind of want to. I'm I'm sort of inspired by like the Thundercats sword here. I grew up with those cartoons, so we're going to do something similar to that. I 
and this will be a weapons accessory. Uh, the, the challenge when drawing any of these things for the, the NFT project is that every element has to fit perfectly with the, you know, thousands and thousands of other combinations. So I got to be real mindful on where the objects start and end. All right, cool. So we'll do that and we have to put, we'll put a bunch of blood on the sword. Cool. Before I sketch anything else, let me just ink this sword to kind of ground everything. And if you're curious, um, I'm not using Photoshop. I'm using uh, a program that's very similar to Photoshop called Clip Studio Paint. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of this program. It's used by a lot of comic book artists. But it's very similar to Photoshop. If you know how to use Photoshop, you'll know how to use this. And it works great with a, a Wacom tablet, which is what I'm using now to draw. And uh, once again, I should um, talk a little bit more about our project. Uh, it is called Zombie Chains. Um, the best place to find more information is is to follow us on Twitter, and it'll it'll be launching on Wednesday, and it is a Cardona Ada um, cryptocurrency NFT project. Um, this is a avatar where I've generated hundreds and hundreds of pieces that are going to be assembled into ten thousand or roughly ten thousand different variations. I'm going to cheat for the circles here because I cannot draw circles. Uh, if, if anyone has any questions, just please ask them in the comments. And I, I can't address them while I'm driving or drawing. It's too hard, uh, too hard for me to focus on both of those things at once. But um, I will definitely come back to the comments after we're done and answer as many of them as I can. Another thing I got to worry about as I'm drawing these things is I can't get too detailed. And if you're a fan of my art, you'll see that I love, love detail. Um, so I often have to go back and kind of cut some of the detail out because with this type of avatar, it's really important that it looks great at a really small size. Uh, just to tell you a little bit about myself, uh, I'm an artist, um, professional artist, been working since 2004, and I've been a full-time freelancer since 2012. I worked in the publishing industry for a bunch of years after college and then went out on my own um, in 2012, and now my wife, uh, Leisha, also works with me. She kind of runs the behind-the-scenes stuff and ships all our product and it keeps me in line, that kind of stuff. All right, so we got the sword going. Um, let's start. What I'm going to do now is jump ahead and sketch in everything else so we can start to see like what the knight is going to look like. Um, oh, you know what I did want to add? Someone made the great suggestion of trying to put in the, the symbol here, so we'll do that. I think that will look cool right here on the sword. So we'll come back to that later. All right, so what I need to do now is I usually put a mask on this to kind of lighten everything so I can start to sketch over top. So let's do, let's get his armor going. I wanted to give him like a really big shield. 
So let's do that here. draw a real big shield Okay, that looks cool. Uh, maybe put like, put an arrow sticking out of it. Um, so while I'm working here, I can start to answer some of these user submitted questions. And uh, thanks again for everyone who sent one in. Um, again, if I if I don't get to your question, I'd be happy to answer them in the comments. So just go ahead and leave that there. Um, so the first question is just broadly what got me into drawing, and um, I I probably never really got into it per se because my um my whole family is filled with artists uh my my grandmother was a fantastic artist my uncle uh, my great grandfather um and in my family my brother uh my brother works for american greetings does excellent work there so art was just always kind of part of my family and um whereas in other families, I think art can be seen as sort of like an alternative, weird career. Like in in my family, it was there was just nothing unusual about it. So me and my brother would always like make our own action figures and stuff like that um, out of cardboard uh, at a very young age, um, which drove my mom nuts because she you know she would buy us all these action figures that we didn't play with. Um, but I, I think I really got into it in high school. I had a great art teacher who encouraged me to enter a bunch of art contests. And I remember winning a pretty good chunk of money at that time um, in an art contest, drawing some crazy ass like skull with just weird machine parts coming out of it and all this stuff. And everyone else in the contest had these beautiful traditional like oil paintings of roses and all this stuff. So I thought that there's no chance in, in hell that I'd ever win. Um, but luckily my art teacher encouraged me to join and I did. And I, I won, not just got in, but I, I won first place. And I think that was really the moment where I was like, Oh, so you can, you can actually make a career drawing weird stuff. I didn't know that. I thought I had to paint, you know, vases and things like that. So, uh, so that was, that was a really great, um, moment in my, in my art upbringing, you'd say. Uh, another great question is, do I have any, uh, advice for aspiring artists? So I've been thinking about this all night and it's hard to think of things that don't sound cliche. Um, but I think the reason that they're cliche is because they work. 
So I'm just I'm basically just going to tell you the stuff that that other artists have been telling me um, all my life. So the first one is uh, you have to draw every single day. Um, drawing should be fun, but it's also work, and it sh you should approach it like you would a workout. You know, um, you need to train your brain and your hand to work together, and that takes. Uh, a lot, a lot of practice. I hate, I hate to say that word, but I mean, this is a drawing is something where you have to put in thousands and thousands and thousands of hours before you even get kind of okay at it, which can be really frustrating. Um, but here, I'll, let me take a break from that for one second, and let's just start uh, start drawing this armor. See, I'm not exactly sure what I want it to look like yet, uh, but I got to stay kind of true to our original base form here. Can't get too wild with the shape of it. Uh, so, okay, so that's the first one. Um, the second one is to, it's, it's great to draw from your imagination. But you also have to set aside a lot of time to draw from real life. Um, going to uh, figure drawing courses is fantastic. You learn it, you learn really fast doing that. Um, if you just stick to drawing from your imagination, you're you're going to uh, you're going to hobble yourself. Um, so I wouldn't recommend that. You got to build both of those things at the same time. Dude, usually there's like a strap here. Pulls that on. And this sketch here, the purpose of this is basically just to plan out what I'm going to draw. I don't, I don't have to follow these lines exactly. I like to flip the screen around a lot, just back and forth like this, and that kind of helps me see the artwork from a different angle. That needs to be bigger. All right, great. Uh, and the other thing is, uh, when I was talking about practicing drawing, um, you want to find a few artists that you absolutely love and don't copy them but try to draw what they've drawn in a different way, in your style. And let them do a lot of the hard work. Those guys have spent years ironing out their style and ironing out you know, how to draw. So watch what they do, uh, watch their YouTube videos. There's just millions of art videos out there that you can watch. Um, maybe later I can recommend some. But um, that's a great way to learn. And also, wait, let me finish that. Okay. Uh, I think that's, that's good for tips. Um, yeah, let's finish up this armor. And then I want to talk a little bit about gritty because I got a lot of questions about gritty. Let's just get the lines down here for this. I have to also be careful while I'm drawing to make sure the line thickness matches the rest of the project. Because if I draw a set of armor or you know a set of eyes or mouths that don't fit, then they're going to look odd with when they're paired with the rest of the shapes and the rest of the assets. I mean.
Okay. Um, also, I forgot to mention, you might see over here, I have a second window open of exactly what I'm drawing, but at a smaller size. And this really helps me kind of not get drawn into the detail too much because I can glance over at this other screen and see exactly how it's going to look at a smaller size. So if it's looking too busy, then I need to step back and, uh, and, and reapproach the thing. All right, cool. So I'm pretty happy with the armor. Uh, the color is going to add a lot to it. But let's go ahead and I'm just going to sketch in everything else and not take a break for, for line work this time. So let's get, let's get the eyes and mouth. That's really important. We're going to use the same base nose, uh, I think. So let's get the eyes going. All right, so while I'm drawing those, let's talk, let's talk about Gritty. Um, if, if any of you uh, don't know, uh, probably the single project I'm most known for is uh, designing the Philadelphia Flyers mascot, uh, Gritty. Um, if you don't know who Gritty is, he is this weird, big, giant, orange, furry mascot. Uh, that kind of went viral on the internet for a uh, few, well, I, he might still be going viral. Uh, I haven't checked in a while, but um, it, it was a big deal. He was on, uh, on all kinds of uh, TV shows, um, and uh, just it seemed like everywhere you look, you'd see him. So my involvement, the Flyers reached out to me uh, about six months before the launch of Gritty. And they were trying to design a mascot for, I think, most of the year. Um, but they didn't like what they were coming up with. So I, I believe what they said to me was like most of what they were seeing was just kind of, was kind of too safe. Um, so they found some artwork online from, of mine that was kind of, uh, kind of, light looking but also sort of creepy at the same time which is sort of what I what I love to draw is things that are funny um, but also creepy um, so I love to ride that line and that's exactly what they were looking for so the, what they told me was they wanted a mascot that someone would want to high five uh, but not hug so that's what we went with and my job as the concept artist was to draw as many different uh, gritty pictures or mascot pictures for the Flyers as I could. So I spent several days um, just doing as many quick sketches as I possibly could. And uh, I think we came up with maybe 25, 25 different uh, options. Um, and I explored all kinds of stuff, uh, animals, um, people, objects, uh, just just as many and all kinds of monsters just as many weird things as I could come up with and they picked a sketch that actually ended up looking quite a lot like gritty today um, so that I was pretty lucky there that they found something from the first set and then after that my job was to go back and forth with them um, over a, over a month just like ref refining him and trying you know what does this eye look like? What, what if we did this mouth? Um, it's actually similar to this project in a way where like I'm taking the same base creature and just trying all kinds of different, different mouths, different eyes. Um, Gritty had wings at one point, just I think probably, probably because of the name, the flyers. So we got rid of those and, um, those weren't working, but as soon as they said wings, then I got to draw five different types of wings. You know, are they, are they bugs wings? Are they birds wings? Um, y you know, you name it, we did them. And um, after they approved the final concept drawing, then I went and 
inked it and colored it. And we experimented with all kinds of different colors. And when, when they were finally happy, uh, what I did was I submitted a drawing to the costume company that showed Gritty from the front and the side and the back. And they used that drawing as a blueprint to build the costume. And all this was happening like literally just maybe a couple months before the launch of the thing. So um, it was pretty exciting. I mean, it's very exciting to be involved, but it was also pretty stressful trying to, to meet that kind of deadline. Um, and so when Gritty walked out on stage to the rest of the world, uh, that was actually the first time I had seen him all completely put together. Because up to that point, all I was seeing was, uh, you know, I saw like Gritty's head. They would text me a picture of his head and then they would pick, send me a picture of his, of his shoes, of his, of his gloves and stuff like that. Um, so it was really awesome to kind of see him become real, like see one of my drawings become real like on, on TV. And, um, and then, then of course we got to talk about the reception of him because most of you probably won't remember, but when Gritty first came out, uh, a lot of people did not like him. Um, maybe hated him. <laughs> I don't know. But at that time, it, it was scary because we, of course, knew that there was going to be pushback anytime that you go and you mess with uh, a football or, I mean, a hockey team's um, tradition or any sports team's tradition, you're going to get pushback, right? But the, the pushback on uh, Gritty was huge. And um, I didn't know where I was going to end. I, I thought my career was over, to be honest. I was hiding under my desk most of the day. Uh, my wife had to tell me to stop checking Twitter. Um, but the marketing team did such a fantastic job of, like, fighting back and like defending gritty and quickly by the end of the week the tide started to turn and like philadelphia w themselves were defending gritty from the rest of the world um very cool and now when i tell people that you know nobody liked gritty at first like most people don't even remember that or or believe me so anyway it's, it's a great part uh, of my career, I you know probably the biggest thing that I will be a part of, I would think. Um, but uh, just you know, really great opportunity. Um, and it's it's insane to answer the door for trick or treaters and see kids wearing gritty costumes. Uh, and uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just it's unreal. Okay, um, what type of stuff do you like drawing the most is a, is a question from, from another, uh, another Twitter user. Um, well, I, I mean, I would say zombies, which is, I think is pretty obvious, but I think in general, what I love to draw is, are things that are creepy, but lighthearted at the same time. So um, I'm not really like a, a cannibal corpse, like disgusting black metal type of artist. I mean, I, that art is great and I, I respect it, but like that's not the kind of stuff I'm drawing. And then on the other end of that, I'm not really like a cutesy children's book artist either. So I, I love to like blend those two areas together. All right, cool. I like this helmet a lot. Um, it needs an arrow through it though. Okay. So I'm looking at the, the clock. I don't want to take up your guys' whole Saturday. So what I'm going to do, let's speed this up a little bit. All right. So we've got the helmet. We've got a set of eyes, a set of teeth, a weapon, which is the sword, and then the clothing. Um, I'm not going to do a necklace for this guy. There's just not really enough room. Um, but let's go. I'm going to ink. What we'll do is I'll ink the uh, the items you see here, 
and then we'll color just a few of them. If we have time, I, I'd love to color them all, but um, we might only have time to color a couple. So let's get let's get going on this. Well, one one idea someone just submitted was um, yeah, there we go. That'll help the shield out a little bit. All right, great. Uh, let's answer another question. Um, is this your first NFT project? So the, the that's uh, the simple answer is yes. This is my first NFT project. Um, it's not my first project like this. Uh, I've built avatars before, um, and I've also worked in animation before, which is very dependent on me, like creating a face with lots of different mouths for each sound. So I found this process like extremely similar. Um, and that experience kind of helped me figure out how to do this like efficiently and quickly. Um, so, so yes, this is my first NFT project. I've been meaning to do one uh, for the longest time. Um, it's just, it's difficult to balance uh, all my freelance clients and then just other personal projects that I have going on. Um, I do a lot of stuff in the pinball world and um, also in the disc golf world. So the, put all those things together and it's, it's difficult to find time, but um, hopefully this is successful and I, I can do some more because I, I really did enjoy it. And it's such like the idea of NFTs for artists is just such a fantastic concept because it it really is the artist is owning that work and benefiting from it and it also allows so many more people to enjoy the artwork rather than if I was just trying to like go to a convention and sell prints or something you you reach so many more people um, so I, I'm really excited about like all the opportunities this is going to open up for for artists everywhere, and uh, it's it's also just really exciting to be kind of like on the you know the forefront of it. Really, I mean I know I'm I'm definitely a late adopter here, but this is really just don't only uh, I don't know if it's just a year old really or the the popularity of it certainly is. So it's really cool. Glad to be a part of it. I thought it would look cool to have his eye, his pupils like pointing in two different directions. I get my background uh, from like 1980s, early 80s uh, toy artwork um, and skateboard artwork. That's the kind of stuff that I would like sit and draw over and over and over again. Um, like Jimbo Phillips is, is a fantastic artist that, uh, that most people are aware of and respect and he just does just amazing like crazy detailed work and that's that's what I am really drawn to um, the garbage pail kids cards that was something that uh, my brothers and I used to collect and I just like would sit there for hours just drawing and making up our own characters all right so one last question um, which zombie is is my favorite so I'm really excited because you guys haven't seen like hardly any. We've released probably at least 30 of these, but there's just so many and um I I think I think you're going to like them. Um but my favorite I think is the cheerleader. Uh just cuz I think it looks hilarious having this this zombie dude wearing a cheerleader's outfit. And uh, it, it also just kind of reminds me of like the original George Romero zombie movies and, and the whole, um, all the zombie cliches that, that I love.
So that's one of my favorite. Uh, there's an astronaut that's cool. Um, there's a wizard that I really like. Ah, what else? There's a there's just kind of a nerd zombie, which is which is fun. Yeah, I'm just I'm really excited to have this start rolling out. The response so far has been fantastic, and um, you know I I, I really appreciate that because we. My partners and I have been working around the clock on this, and uh, it's a lot of behind-the-scenes work. And to see the uh, people sort of um, really appreciating the detail of the artwork um, is something that I really appreciate because uh, it takes a lot more time. Uh, It takes a lot more time to draw these than if... I just did like vector artwork in uh, Adobe Illustrator or something, which definitely has its charms. Um, but it's just that's just not the kind of artwork that I um, excel at. So, so it's it's great to see people appreciating the difference. I should say. All right, cool. So I like that mouth, and let's do the helmet. And then we should have some time, uh, thanks to everybody who's hanging on, uh, we should have some time to to color at least most of these. Which is great, because I think um, because this art, this line art is so like clean and simple, uh, the colors add a lot uh, to the piece. Kind of want to turn this other stuff off for a second so I can really see the helmet. Uh, I think what I'm going to try to do here is, since I uh, answered everybody's questions that they already sent in, um, I'm going to try to see if I can get my wife maybe to read some of your questions to me while I'm working. So let, give me a moment to set that up, and then if anyone has any questions I didn't answer, I'll, tr- I'll try to do that now while I'm, while I'm working. Just uh, give, me, give me like five minutes here. Ooh, I don't like that. And sorry, if you hear the all these clicks going on, I have a little like keyboard shortcut keypad that was designed for uh, designed for gamers actually um, to program macros into when they're playing games, and it works amazing for drawing because I can change the size of my brush and like jump back and forth to different tools like really really quickly uh, if you're interested it's called a, uh, a razor Nostromo um, or the razor orb weaver which both of them are great All right, great. So I'm getting some questions in here. Um, so uh, someone is asking about my brushes. Which brush did you use for the, the blue sketch layer? So what, what's awesome about Clip Studio Paint is that um, there's just one button to turn whatever's on your layer blue. So it doesn't matter what brush you use, whatever you're using on that layer will look like a, uh, a blue line pencil. And that's really helpful because it, it kind of allows me to trace over the artwork in, um, in ink and not get confused about what's, what's, the, uh, what's the pencil or what's the ink. Um, as far as what brushes I'm using, um, these are actually brushes that I've made. Um, I, uh, I, have a bunch, if I, I have a bunch of them um, on my website, but they are 
really easy to make and customize in Clip Studio Paint. So I, I normally start with the default brushes and just kind of add textures to them and, and play around with, with, the, uh, with the details. But doing the blue line like this like goes back to um, I'm old enough where you know Photoshop and drawing digitally was around, but they didn't have these walk in the Cintiqs, which are like these monitors that you draw on. So you either had to use a flat tablet that's like off to the side like a mouse, or you had to draw on paper and scan it in and then color it. So that's what I did. Um, I I would draw in blue colored pencil on paper and then I would ink it and then when you scan it into Photoshop you can hide the blue lines you can just like adjust the colors and make the blue go away and it was a pain in the neck but like that's the way you did it um, now doing a project like this like that like drawing uh, on paper um, would be really really challenging because you have to kind of make sure that everything is lined up um, and, and on top of each other uh, exactly in the right position. And doing that um, just with tracing paper on a light table uh, might be impossible. I don't know. Um, <laughs> somebody, someone asked, well, yeah, I can't answer that. Um, what, one thing I want to address, like a lot of people requested that we do a gritty zombie and like as much as I think that would be so much fun, like I, you know, I don't, I design gritty, but I did that as a contractor to the flyer. So I do not own gritty and we can't do that. Um, so that was one question that just came in. Um, and let me just go back real quick for anybody who like joined late and talk m about zombie chains. The best place to find information uh, is our Twitter page. Um, all of, the, of our links are there. So just type in zombie chains in Twitter. Um, we also have a website, zombiechains.io, uh, that you can check out. And again, we're launching this whole thing um, in the middle of this uh, or next week so this coming Wednesday um, and uh, I, I unfortunately I'm sorry I don't know the time off the top of my head but that will if it's not public yet will be very soon and this zombie that we're designing today will actually be one of the um, one of the minted zombies and all of these pieces that you see here are, are going to be used in all of the sets. So you might see a zombie wearing this helmet, um, wearing that sword, but mixed with all the other helmets. And my, uh, my partners, the people who set up this project, uh, are fantastic programmers and are just doing all this incredible work that just you know makes my head spin. I'm just the guy who draws pictures, and I, I like it that way. So the uh, I just uh, I checked the uh, the launch will be uh, twelve. It'll be noon Eastern this coming Wednesday. And again, any um, any other uh, information that you need can be found on the website. All right, cool. So we got everything inked. Um, let's let's get some color down. Let's turn all this stuff back on. So we already have the base green color here. So if anybody, uh, if there's any questions I didn't answer, please go ahead and, and type them in the comments and we will we'll try to answer them live here.
And one thing I always have to be careful of is to not get carried away with how much shading and detail I add, which is like totally against my nature. But what I do first is just put in like the flat colors and then I go back and shade them in. So I can use I can use these flat colors as a, a selection tool. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think um, I don't want to take up your guys' whole Saturday, so what we'll do, let's just color the sword and the uh, the shield today, and then um, tomorrow we'll release the completely finished zombie for you to check out. Um, but I, hopefully that should have given you an idea of how this stuff works. going on here um, someone just asked if I had brushes for procreate um, I don't it's, it's one of those things that's been on my list forever and I, I just can't seem to find time to do it um, I have Photoshop brushes and you can use those Photoshop brushes in procreate I just haven't ever gone in and like actually tweaked the settings to make it work you know specifically for procreate so if you're using those brushes there's probably a lot of work to be done in like changing the size of the brush and, and tweaking it just right that kind of thing um, I don't use procreate a lot I, I know some artists love it I do have an iPad Pro and I do have procreate but um, I think I think what it is is like I I work at this desk so much that when I'm away from my desk, I don't I don't want to draw. I, I mean, I'm I'm clocked out. So when I'm in front of a movie, um, I just don't I just don't have the desire to get the iPad out and and, and keep working. So I don't know. I'm gonna get attacked from Procreate fans for that. A anytime I say anything about Procreate, they they come out of the woodwork. But anyway. Come at me. Um, so someone is asking how I got into the NFT world. Um, I've, I've had my eyes on it for, for a while. Um, I, I was an early adopter of crypto. So I, um, you know, I, I invested in a fair amount of that. Um, and I, I just love, as I said earlier, I love the opportunities this is opening up. So it's been on my radar forever and I just hadn't I just did not have time to do it. And this project fell kind of fell into my lap and it was with um just just super capable guys. Uh I trusted that they would handle it correctly. Um so it just it just seemed like I gotta drop what I'm doing and give this a shot. Um and uh, and here we are. Okay, cool. So I'm kind of bummed that I can't finish the whole thing for you today, but like this stuff always takes longer than I think it will. Um, and but hopefully I've drawn enough today to kind of give you an idea of, of how this works. And I want to thank everybody again for all the suggestions. Um, they were great. I I think I made a list of like 
60 suggestions that I really loved. And so maybe we'll be able to get to them in the future um, if we do this again. Uh, someone's asking what the resolution of the final NFT will be. Um, I don't, please don't quote me on this because we're, all, we're still in development, but it should be 1080 by 1080, um, which is a great size for, I mean, any screen really. That's, that's high definition. Um, here we go. What's going on here? I got something happening. Oh, there we go. Cool. All right, nice. So I think the sword is done. I'm just gonna do a pass of some brighter color here. Just kind of give it a little glow. Great. Uh, so let's do the shield to match, and I think we can wrap it up for today. So it, we, we probably have another 10 minutes here, so if there's any other questions I didn't answer, please go ahead and, and let me know. Uh, I have a lot of questions about what I use for streaming and um, I've done a lot of streaming. I do want to just say like I'm not an expert on it, but I use OBS um, on my Mac and that OBS software allows me to use my camera and to record my screen at the same time as well as do a bunch of other stuff. Um, there's a bit of a learning curve. It took me a while to learn it. Uh, but there's lots of YouTube videos out there on how to do it. And um, we have uh, that connected to a um, software program called Restream. And Restream takes the stream from OBS and it puts it on Facebook and YouTube and uh, Twitch and whatever else you want. Which, um, well, not whatever else you want. There's lots of limits. But... Um, it's uh, it's it's really cool because you can stream to multiple out outlets at the same time if you use that. And uh, other than that, like as far as streaming tools, I just have like a blue snowball microphone. Hopefully, you can hear me okay, and um, a an HD camera. But I definitely need to invest in a in a, a better one, a better camera. It's like an arms race. Anytime you get something you think is good they someone else one ups you but anyway that's my uh, again I am not an expert at streaming so take all that with a grain of salt please can't decide if I want this to be like a wooden shield but yeah I think that works All right, so we're getting close to the end here. I see some requests. You should put some uh, some brain on the arrow through the head. So I got to do that. These are the kind of requests I enjoy. Um, and someone is asking again what software I use. So I'll, t I'll take this opportunity to kind of wrap everything up um, and summarize everything. So from the top, uh, my name is Brian Allen. I'm a, a freelance artist um, and I use Clip Studio Paint, 
which is a fantastic art program. This is for a NFT project called Zombie Chains. You can find more info at zombiechains.io or follow us on Twitter. Just search Zombie Chains. And we are launching really soon. We are launching next, this coming Wednesday, just in a few days really, um, at 12 p.m. Eastern. And this is a uh, 10K project, so we will be having nearly 10,000 unique zombies um, built from hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hand-drawn assets. Um, I should should have emphasized that every every asset that you see is basically drawn in this way, um, and uh, I'm really proud of it, and I, I can't wait to share it and kind of roll the dice on it and and, and hope uh, hope people like it. Let's see. I think I, I think that covers everything. Um, and again, if there are any questions I missed, uh, you can ask them right now, or I will try to go back to the, uh, the Twitter and YouTube feed later on and answer as many as I can. Kind of make this look like it's part of the shield. Again, trying, I'm fighting myself. Like I want to go in and add tons and tons of detail, but I got to like strike that balance of it's got to look good zoomed out, you know, so it's a constant back and forth fight. But um, let's see, let's just throw some light on there. And I think that'll do it. All right, great. So I'm sorry we couldn't finish the whole thing. But I'm going to work on this the rest of the day, and we'll post it tomorrow. And again, all of these elements that we just drew will be available in the full set. And this one night that you see here, fully colored, will be minted as well. Um, so thank you so much for watching. Uh, I, I really appreciate it. And um, anyway, well, th thanks again, and, and enjoy your weekend. Now you get to see me struggle to... <laughs>